Good morning, Pastor Ben here. I'm with Devin Thomas. We're going to be talking a little bit about our message from Sunday called The Attitude of Jesus from our two-week series of Saved People, Serve People, if I can get my words correct this morning. But anyhow, we're back. Shop for Tom. Kind of felt like John Cena, right? Thomas, can you put John Cena's entrance music <laughs> right there as we did yeah. it? Welcome back to Chop for Tom. Good morning, everyone. Let's uh, open up with a word of prayer today. Father, we just uh, thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to examine your word, how precious it is that you've given to us your word, that it is life-giving, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, it pierces, Lord. And we just ask that it would pierce our hearts, that you would empower us through your spirit. We pray that you bless this time and bless this message in Jesus' name. Amen. So looking at saved people, serve people. What you said a that much better than I did, man. So, well done. <laughs> yeah. Um, what a concept, you know. So let's let's talk about Sunday's message. Just give us a quick recap. So we looked at Philippians chapter two, verses three through eight. Looked at the attitude of Jesus. So we're mm-hmm. taking two weeks looking at service. You know, coming off of the Exodus series, that study that we did in that. There's a big. Um, you know, emphasis on obedience and just pursuing God and following God and, and, you know, doing what he wants us to do there at the end of Exodus, which leads us into this concept of saved people, serve people. So in these two weeks, we're taking a foundational look, which is kind of what we did on Sunday about uh, the attitude of Jesus. Again, because here we have this savior who came came to not to be served, but to serve. And we have to make sure that our attitude is right. Our motives are pure. Our heart is focused in the right place as we move to service. Because there's times that we can serve people and do great things for people, but be totally doing it for the wrong reasons. Mm. Um, For self-glorification, to get attention, um, that type of thing. So I wanted to take a Sunday and really set the barometer, so to speak, as to this needs to be our attitude mm. before we get into next Sunday, which is going to be a very practical look at service. Amen. So what you know, what was the attitude of Jesus? And we pulled out of that passage, uh, you know, verses six, seven, and eight. We saw that Jesus wasn't entitled. You know, he didn't. He laid down every right he had as being divine amen you know, he, he 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 didn't detach from his divinity but he didn't exploit them that's i used the christian standard bible and that's the translation there that he didn't consider being equal with god something to be exploited mm. or used for his advantage so we looked at that attitude that we we can't be entitled when we serve amen uh, we also looked at the fact of we have to, um, you know, other people have to become more mm-hmm. and we have to become less. We looked at John 13, whenever Jesus washed the disciples' feet, mm-hmm. you know, he, less of him, he made more of others. And then at the end, you know, just be, you know, the, the, the last attitude we see in verse 8 of, sec, uh, of Philippians 2 is that, we got to be obedient no matter what the cost. Mm. Uh, we went to first John three sixteen, you know, and even in that passage in Philippians two, it talks about him being willing to be obedient, even if that meant dying on the cross for us. Amen. You know, and I, I love that passage right there at the beginning of Philippians where it says in two, five, it says, let the same mind mm-hmm. be in you, yeah. which was also in Christ Jesus. You know, it comes back to the whole thing. WWJD. What would Jesus do? I mean, the Bible says in First John that he who says, I know him, should also walk in the same steps as he himself walked. So that is our call. And thank you. You know, I mean, it's such a, a empowering message because, you know, we're coming out of the presence of God from Exodus, being there, and the people were serving. We had the temple, the built. That was all for the service of the presence of God. And so, you know, now we have a manual. We're celebrating Thanksgiving at this time, but we're getting moving into that presence of Christ with us where we focus in on Jesus. Jesus coming down here and, and living amongst us, 
And so, you know, we're focusing on that. We want to be like Christ. And I think that's such a great aspect to look at. Thomas, was there anything that, that stood out to you in the message this week? Um, you uh, you took a little bit of time to focus in on the, the wasn't it John 13? Did you focus on it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple washing, passages out of there, yeah. Um, which is kind of funny because that's exactly the passage that Isaiah Jones preached about at chapel three days before mm. um, and, and had the same focus of that idea of serving people. And serving people in a way that's uh, countercultural, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. And it, it got me thinking about not only that passage, but also like Matthew 19 and Matthew 20 of the first to be last and the last to be first. Um, and I always just appreciate that, you know, Jesus gave us uh, not only a, a, like a directive and like a challenge to behave and do certain things, but also gave us the example of how to do it. Mm-hmm. Like he didn't just say, do this, go. <laughs> it was like... I'm going to show you how this works. I'm going to set the example um, in a way that is not culturally normal uh, so that you can look back on this exact moment and practice that same thing. Yeah. You know, it's which is very different to the law of mm-hmm. the Old Testament, which is just, you got a bunch of stone tablets. Do this, keep Do, those. Yeah, yeah, and it's 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 so much harder to, to follow in my opinion. But uh, yeah, so Matthew 19 and Matthew 20 of that first be last and last be first kept coming to my mind. Yeah. Well, yeah, I had a conversation with someone yesterday. We were talking about the message and talking about that passage out of John 13, about Jesus washing the disciples' feet and how that gave us such a powerful example of the leader of leaders, you know, like Christ Amen. coming and um, lowering himself. I mean, being willing and not not doing it out of obligation, but to to, pro- to provide us that example of how we should be leading one of the things we talked about yesterday in that conversation was Jesus was washing the feet and providing this example to his followers who most of them would become the leaders of the early church. Yes. So as the under shepherds that were establishing this first early church, they were coming fresh off of this example, not only of the savior dying on a cross, as a sacrifice, as an act of service. But he was providing them glimpses of what true service meant, that true service wasn't always something that was public, something that was spectacular, something that was this big event. Service for leaders was also those intimate moments of Mm. connection when nobody else in the world was watching. That's right. But there was still this connection of leader to future leaders that I'm going to show you this and provide you this example. I'm, I'm going to do it out there too. But you've got to understand that you can't just serve or do things when you're seen. Right. They have to be done in private as well. You know, David in the Old Testament with the bear and the lion. Yeah. It was like I was in the backside of a wilderness. I saw God deliver me from the bear and the lion. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine He's that he should down. stand in the uh, against the living God? Um, a lot of times what we do in private uh, kind of dictates what God can entrust us with in the public. Yeah, you know, somebody told me this great acts of mercy are done by those who practice small acts of kindness. Yeah. You know, it's it's the small things, the hidden things that establish the real character. It's easy to put on a show for people, but it's really when you're alone and when you're doing things for people in the small things that nobody sees. Just like Jesus said, hey, don't let your left hand know what your right mm-hmm. hand is doing. That way your, your gifts are going to be seen by your father and then he's going to reward you. So You know, I love that, you know, and I think this is where we're talking about empowerment for service. One of the things we could look at today is the Holy Spirit. You know, we're not going to get into tongues or things like that, but we'll take a look at the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. If we could turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, because... And I think this important aspect, we we're talking about, you know, God was over Israel and then, you know, and, and Jesus came as Emmanuel, but he told the disciples, it's good that I go away from you because I'm going to send you the spirit, you know, and it's like, well, Jesus is better. You know, I think somebody talked about this on stage or last week we talked about this. You know, it's important that we should look at the Holy Spirit. What's he doing in our lives for this service that we're Mm -hmm. talking about? Save people, serve people. So if we could look at uh, 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 through 7. Sure. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. 
There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. To the one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. Amen. And it goes on a little bit more to describe some more spiritual gifts. But I love this passage because, you know, when we're talking about small acts of service versus big acts of service, um, and what are we doing here? Who is the leader over this? And mm-hmm. I think these are some key aspects that we can look at, whether you're being humble or thinking of yourself less, um, or whether you're being obedient, who's going to lead you in those things? Let's, uh, let's, let's talk about, um, you know, diversities or the same God who works all in all. What do you think about in this passage is God working in people? So let me ask you a question. Yes. They will know we are his children by our what? Our love. Our love. Our love for one another. 1 Corinthians 12 and 1 Corinthians 14. Mm -hmm. Paul deals with spiritual gifts. Like that's, that's the thrust of both of those chapters. What's 1 Corinthians 13? It's the love chapter. It's the love chapter. That's right. right. I mean, you go to a wedding, uh, you're going to hear from 1 Corinthians 13, most likely. It's always fascinated me that right in the heart of spiritual gifts is love, Mm. is a description of love. Mm. So if we, I think it's foundationally important that we understand if we're talking about the gifts of the Spirit. Whether it be practical outplaying, something that goes a little bit beyond our capacity to be able to produce, if it's not founded in God's love, Mm. then it's not of God. Amen. Period. Uh, So this diversity, when we start looking at it, because we, we have this tendency to want to elevate different gifts, different callings, different talents, different abilities. And we have, we establish like a hierarchy for them. Like, right. you know, this is, this is the top one. This is a little bit underneath there. And we, we go all the way down through and there's no lesser spiritual gift. Mm. There's no greater spiritual gift than another. God has uh, given us each a spiritual gift so that we can help each other. And then, you know, to one person, he gives this to another person, he gives this to another person. And it, it's not listed in a hierarchy of, well, this one's the most important, right? This one's the most important, or this one's a little less important, still kind of important. Um, and I, and I think that takes us back, you know, before we started recording, we were talking about the body analogy that Paul so often uses. Yes. Um, and I think it leads to that also is like the, the spiritual gifts function, as a body to encourage and help and lift up the others. Amen. Thomas, any insight into that passage right there? Yeah. I mean, kind of, kind of what you were just saying of the parts of the body, like it's, if, if we start to <clears throat> pick apart each of these spiritual gifts and get jealous, if someone else has, you know, a supernatural level of wisdom, you know, like, like talked about there, um, that we kind of get jealous but the, the passage is very clear. It's like, same spirit, like same God. Same Lord. And if you start saying that one is greater than the other, then you're saying that certain things of God's character are greater than other parts right. of God's character. Do, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, it's it's all from the same God. It's all from the same spirit, all for the same purpose uh, to sort of further his kingdom and, and you know, um, spread his love and all that kind of stuff. And um, I think we can be very quick to be jealous of other people's abilities whether it's whether it's supernatural type stuff with, with some of the gifts of the spirit um which we stopped before uh supernatural powers in that passage uh, i was told, I flirted with it because I, I read one passage too many i read through eight i was just i was gonna just jump up and stop you but yeah. well i i was given specific instructions before this to not go into rabbit holes of uh, spiritual spiritual gifts but, so thomas um, do, do spiritual gifts tie into our eternal security and whether we can lose oh, our salvation oh, oh, pastor or not? stop i mean i mean because like i mean this is what four episodes in a row we've got to mention something uh, that's, that's true that's true um where was I going? 
I have no Next idea. week, do you have to speak in tongues to be saved? No. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So no. no, no, like it's um, it's you know they're all all the same, all different gifts from the same spirit because they're all deemed good from for different reasons from the same God, um, and we can get jealous uh, whether it's with this gifts of the spirit or even just our own abilities um, when it comes to acts of service. You know, sometimes we look at people on the stage and we're like, well, if I was musical, I would serve more mm-hmm. and I'd be the, on the worship team. Right. Um, but I'm not. So I'm not going to do that, um, which I think is a real shame because there's so many. Everybody has a capacity to serve in some way. You know, we had mentioned uh, Jackie Brandt uh, just in conversation yesterday yeah. or something like that, yeah. that um, just such a prayer warrior for the church Amen. and has never retired from service. Right. Do you know what I mean? And uh, it's a really good example of, you know, we don't, yeah, we don't retire from, from service in God, you know, um, which I think is important. Yeah. Amen. You know, I think that's important too, that we're talking about save people, serve people. <clears throat> and so this empowerment of the Holy Spirit is for the whole body. You know, the problem sometimes that we're really dealing with in all, in all churches, but you know, that 10% of the body do a hundred percent of the work, you know, and it's not always in every church, but and our encouragement is to people that if I've only been saved one month or three months or five months or, you know, 30 years, you are important to the body of Christ yeah, to, to make it work. You know, and this is important right here because it's not you, it's Christ in you that's working through you. The Bible says that's the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Exactly. And that's what people need. You know, it's not, hey, you don't have to get up and preach a message. A hug. A hi. You know, a little aspect. Taking out some garbage. Cleaning off a table. I mean, these are not things that are, oh, well, those aren't showy gifts. You know, those aren't the big, you know, supernatural wisdom. So I don't have a gift of the Holy Spirit. No, you do. Mm -hmm. Everyone. I mean, if we look at verse 7, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to how many? Each one. Each one. So everybody has a mm-hmm. gift in the, whatever it is. And, and you know what I find? It, and I just like to speak about this one. Where do you find your gifts? How do you find your gifts? You know, because that's all the big question. What is my gift in the body? How do we how do we figure that out? Well, they're gifts of the spirit. So I think that if we would ask Holy Spirit, that would be a really good place to start. Start right yeah. there. Yes. Amen. I mean, and that, that, that sounded sarcastic and I really didn't mean it to be. <laughs> That sarcastic, but I, I mean, I, I think that's we we overcomplicate things. Yes, so frequently, uh, myself included, so guilty of that. But you know, He is the giver of all good gifts. Amen. Uh, just start by seeking God. We saw that coming out of Exodus. Man, He desires to be with us. Yes, He desires to dwell with us so much that in John we see that He came and He tabernacled amongst us to dwell mm-hmm. amongst us, and then. When Jesus left, like you referenced a little bit earlier, he said, I'm, you're actually going to be better off when I go away because I'm sending, I'm with you now, but I'm sending my Holy Spirit to dwell, to tabernacle inside of you. So God tabernacled with them in the Old Testament in a place of a physical structure. Yes. Then to usher the testaments, to to transition the covenants, God came and tabernacled amongst us mm. in the form of a person. And then when, once the covenant completely changed, he now tabernacles inside of us. So it went from a place to a person to an indwelling. Right. And that's, that's how much God desires Amen. Amen. to be with us. So if we're looking for what God wants from us, I don't need to look to you. I don't need to look to Todd. I don't need to look to a pastor. Sure, they can give us great insight. Sure. Yeah, God's called him to help us along in this journey, but I'm not responsible for calling anyone. Right. I'm not responsible for gifting you in your spiritual gifts or what God has called you to do. I can I can journey with you and help you to discover that. Yes. But it's from God. So Amen. we need to seek God. Amen. I, and I think that Thomas, you know, have you ever heard, you know, people ask, well, I don't know what my spiritual gift is. You know, what do you tell them? Uh, yeah. I, 
it's funny because we don't really talk about spiritual gifts with the much youth. here. Like it, and, and it's come up a lot just in this last month. Like a lot, like a weird amount, like potentially, hmm. like suspiciously, a lot. <laughs> the um, Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> and, and it's and it's one of those things. Like, um, a lot of the kids are beginning to ask the question because we're talking more about the Holy Spirit. A lot of the kids are like, "What does it do?" And we're like, "Ah, well, <laughs> that's a difficult question because there's a lot that it does." Mm. Um, and that's something that I have to keep reminding myself. Kind of what you were talking about, like, it's. Jesus said it was better that he leaves and the Holy Spirit comes. But I am all I always think, oh, if I could only have been around when Jesus was around, you know, which I think is wrong because he tells us it's better yeah. that we have the Holy Spirit around. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, like, I think with, with regard to the gift of the Spirit, like how do we know which one we have? I'm not really sure. Like, I don't, I feel like trial and error isn't the right course to go. Like, I don't think you should. R&D, research and develop. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, <laughs> like, I don't think you should, you know, clench up real hard and see if you can teleport like Philip, you know, or, or. That'd like, be so cool. You know, you know, oh, man, like, I would love that gift. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I think, I think just prayer and asking for yeah. the Holy Spirit to show you what you're gift is and um, that was something that we did with uh, when chad led a lesson on finding our identity from the holy spirit Amen. and we took some time to just pray and be quiet and see what sort of came up and one of the things that really came up for me was like that the the hospitality stuff you know we have a, a small house but it's it's a nice house and we can have people over and welcome them in and we've got we've got one or two college students who you know, I'll sometimes just go home for lunch and they're just sitting there, which is great. Um, mm. Or one that potentially might be living with us in, in coming semesters um, and trying to make use of that. Because that was the first thing that came to my mind. So we're like, well, maybe this is something we have to pursue. So it's like if if you feel a Holy Spirit prompting you to say maybe this is your gifting, mm. it's to actually go do something about it. Amen. Yeah. Like, yeah. What, what, are, what are you passionate about? Yes. You know, what, what, what are you passionate about? I think that that's a big indicator. Um, what brings you to tears hmm. unexpectedly? Like, you know, I mean, we, we all have those moments that we can come to tears over similar things, sad storylines in a book or a movie or a story. I was about or, to say, I have the spiritual Gandalf. gift of Lion King. Yeah, Lion King, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, but I mean, those moments to where you're just really emotionally moved For by sure. something or brought to tears and it's completely unexpected. Like, I have no idea why I'm Mm. crying right now, you know, pay attention to those. Amen. Uh, And and also what are, what are you good at? Thank you. What what are you good at? Um, There's so many beautifully talented people and and we'll go back to a music standpoint. I'm not one of those people that is naturally talented musically or vocally, but the people who are using their musical or vocal talents for God Chances are they were good at that stuff mm. before they became a Christian. Sure. Like, you know, somebody who's a brilliant uh, guitar player before they know Christ is still a brilliant guitar player after they know. They're just yeah. using that talent right. for Christ. Amen. So I think that that's a couple practical things that we could look at. I, and I think that's such a key point is because the the one of the things I want to encourage is don't get paralyzed because you don't know what you can do. Yeah. I mean, because that's a lot of people's excuse. I don't know what to do in the body of Christ. Just get involved, yeah. you know, get involved with the ministry, get involved with, um, you know, something that's going on. Like we're talking the challenge this week, whether it was, you know, the food pantry or whether it was fostering possibilities or celebrate recovery. You know, those are three small areas that the church is involved in, in the community. And if you're involved in those, chances are the Holy Spirit's going to empower you to do something. Yeah. And, you know, and that's what's important right there. Don't let your, hey, I don't know what my spiritual gift is. Keep you away. You should be asking the Holy Spirit. We should be, you know, seeking what our passions are, but move forward because mm-hmm. if you don't see it, somebody is going to see it. You know, yeah. somebody, somebody from the outside is going to be like, Hey, can you come over here? And serve? cause they're going to see the gift inside of you. And they're gonna be like, Hey, just be right here. But that's all we need is. And I think one of the things that you mentioned in the attitude of Christ this week was that he was obedient and he was humble, mm-hmm. you know, and he was humble to who? To God, the father. Yeah. 
you know, because God the Father said, hey, go down. And, you know, and this was their plan from all eternity past. And he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. And so, you know, he didn't want to do that. I think that's his great aspect. You may not want to serve, you know, yeah. uh, but God has called you to serve. Jesus said, hey, Father, if this could pass away from me, yeah. please let just do something else. Yeah. But, but not you, not what I want. Exactly. What you want. And so I think that's, you know, when you're obedient, you're going to serve even if you don't know how, even mm. if it doesn't feel the best, even if you're uncomfortable. Because, you know, what I've learned is that I've become comfortable after I'm uncomfortable for a while because I'm, I'm learning to serve. I'm learning to be obedient. I'm learning to be a brother. I'm learning to be, you know, those things in the body of Christ. And that's what's come through years of service, you know, and that's so important because hey, when you rub shoulders with some people, sometimes it's uncomfortable, you know, and, and that's important. But that's a whole other yeah. message. We well, can I, had a guy, I had a guy at the gym I was having a conversation with yesterday who was here on Sunday, and he said, you know, I am so quick to forget just how blessed I am when I serve. Mm. He said, I forget that. He said, I get wrapped up in me and I I forget that not only when I serve someone else, it blesses them. He said, but I forget how much it blesses me Amen. too. Amen. Amen to that. And I just, I, I want to read a passage out of first Peter, yeah, if you're yeah. good with that. Yes, absolutely. First um, Peter chapter four. Uh, verse 10, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever Amen. Mm. I I love the examples that Peter gives here because they're so practical. Yes. Because we can look at the Pauline listing of the gifts of spirits. And get confused. And get confused yeah. and get intimidated and feel like we're disqualified from them. Uh, Peter, being the ever practical uh, follower that he was, says, okay, let's, let's use it. Can you talk? Yeah. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as if he's speaking through you. Amen. Can you help others? Mm. Can you simply just help? Just come alongside. He's like, then do that because that's a spiritual gift. Amen. I, I love that. Love that practicality. Thomas, anything? Yeah. Stand? I mean, like that's, that's one of the other things you mentioned CR. <clears throat> a lot of, I think a lot of the times we think, well, I'm maybe not gifted to work with people who are going through the things that people at CR typically go through. Cause that's, that's heavy. Mm -hmm. That's a lot to help process. You said something really great on Sunday. It's like, can you say hello? <laughs> like, yeah. just come and say hello. Or even if you're not a people person at all, we need people who can run a computer. Amen. We need people who can operate uh, audio so that everybody in the room can actually hear what's being preached. Yes. Like, you know, if, if you're not a people person and you're more a, a sort of behind the scenes type individual, there's room for that too. Like, we need both of those things. You know, like even this coming Sunday, um, I'm not particularly good with the sign board, but we're out of sign people for this coming Sunday. So I'm hopping in on unsigned. Mm. Um, and it'd be great if we had like a, a team of people ready to serve in the tech world on Sunday mornings. Um, you know, even though the upfront preaching, teaching, reading, praying, uh, communion thoughts, all those kinds of things are more uh, celebrated in a weird way mm -hmm. because you're upfront. Um, those are that's a small portion of the needs of like just running even just a church service, Yeah, you know, and that's one hour a week, right. <laughs> you know? Right. So there's plenty to do is kind of what I, has been coming to my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, and I love this, uh, the verse, one of the verses that this is, and you talked about this earlier and above all things have fervent love for one. That's verse eight of the passage that you just read. And in love is what it says. Love covers a multitude of sins. Love leads to service. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, God loves us. He poured out his spirit. on us. He gave us his son. He brings us into his presence. And it's all for what his glory. Mm -hmm. The ending passage right there is that our service glorifies him and, and every Christian. In the world, their goal, their duty, their aspect, their everything it says in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, I think it says, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Amen. And it says that Jesus Christ it belongs glory, you know, and so I think that's really our service for, is for his glory. Mm -hmm. 
It's about him. Yeah. It's not even about us. I'd like it to be about me. You know, hey, please shine the spotlight on me. But really, that's the wrong attitude. You talked about the attitude. It's not about entitlement. It's not about my position. It's about like Jesus did. He said, I am Lord and master. And you say, well, that I am, but I'm giving you an example that you should go and do likewise. Yeah. And when we have that in our heart, that I want to be like him, I want to serve him, and I'm going to bring God glory by doing this, that's the proper motive. And that's what changes our hearts. It mean, really changes service because that's when you you stop thinking about oh i'm not good at this or whatever it's just like hey i'm gonna do what god's called me to do and he's gonna give me the power to do it and you know if somebody says i'm really not good at it well they'll move me to something else right um how about uh takeaways takeaways let's start with the i'll always start with like start tom let's put them on the spot (laughs) Uh, i I just used all of my all of my thoughts already gone (laughs) every time every time uh no, I, I, just for this series in general, I'm excited to see what comes out of it. Uh, or even for this coming Sunday, uh, a prime example of being able to use your gifting outside of being employed by the churches. We have someone coming in to teach mm-hmm. who's just a congregation member, mm, yeah. you know, like, you know, we're not that protective of the pulpit that nobody else is allowed to teach unless you're on staff, right, you know, right. if you have a gifting and if you're able to. Uh, you know, then that opportunity will be there, you know, um, and, and obviously we're excited to hear what, what, what sort of happens mm. after all of this over the next few weeks. Yeah. I really hope it, it does inspire a big change in, in a lot of people's mentalities of, hey, I should get involved, whether it's at church, in the community, uh, anywhere, you know. Um, I just hope that it's not just another Sunday series that we hear and then we walk away and we're like, good. Yeah. You know, yeah. hopefully it's more than that. Yeah. So. Amen. And, and that's my encouragement. A takeaway for me is, is serve others, love somebody. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't take a lot. It's just, you know, whether you're cleaning a table for, for God's glory or whether you're picking up, taking out the garbage or whether you're preaching a sermon, mm-hmm. you know, just, just there's something to do. Yeah. And we need, we need help. You know, I think that's it. You know, we we need help. We can't do it all by ourselves. We need somebody to come alongside of us and help us out. Yeah. I think the the platform that we see Jesus' service built on is putting others ahead of himself. Mm, amen. Uh, and, and that, I think, that's the heart of it. That has to be the heart of our service. That has to be the attitude of it, no matter what we're doing, spotlight, visible or not. Um, what, what we're doing for God, our service— is always driven by love, and we're given the example of it being built on um, lifting others, lowering yourself. Mm. Amen. Well, beautiful. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, We want to encourage you to hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed and also to hit the like button because that will carry this message out to more people that need to hear this and as well as allow you to hear firsthand when these messages come out. With that said, um, you also can reach us at uh, FCCGrayson.com at the church or look up online to in order to contact. If you have any questions, comments, need some help, need some prayer, reach out, Come on at church, um, any of the above right there. We're going to close out with the word of prayer. Pastor, would you close out? Absolutely. Father, I just ask that you motivate our hearts today to serve, uh, to serve you, to serve the body for your glory. Uh, God, whether it be the words that we speak, the actions that we take, the posture uh, that we position ourselves in, God, let us all do it for your glory and our good. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.